Good day, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today, as you can tell, it's going to be a hot one. We brought the Naked Chef back. I think the last appearance was at the Takeda uh, Honisuki Chicken Butchery knife demo, which you can see here. But it's going to be a hot one because let's see if I can do this in post-processing. Fire! Because I'm unboxing a knife, I'm going to show you a knife that you're going to want to have after you see this video. This isn't even my knife. It's a knife from a good friend of mine from Bulgaria. His name is Lubo. You can find him in the Japanese Made Knives Cutlery and Conversation Facebook group. I'll put a link to that group in the description below. And this is his knife. He sent it to me because he wants me to talk a little bit more about Konosuke and the Fujiyama line to all of you. Because some of you are going to care about what's in the box, but others are going to want to know a little bit more about the history, the family of the brand. And so this is going to be a super exciting video. I can't wait to dive in because, again, this isn't even my knife. I'm having the super rare and honorable opportunity to just take a look at this knife, to hold it, and to share information with you. Now, this information isn't mine, right? I don't want to pretend like I'm taking ownership. Lubo gave me a lot of information, but Lubo also got a lot of information from... Uh, username Omega on Kitchen Knife Forms. He put together a beautiful blog post, I think in March 2019. It took him a few years of research to put all this information together. So please, when I'm sharing information with you near the middle or the end of this video, it is not information that is necessarily mine. I just want to make that clear because we need to give credit where credit is due. So in the box is a Konisuke Fujiyama line, 210 millimeter Gyoto, blue number one and I've already taken a look at it, it is absolutely amazing. Now I know that there's going to be two types of people coming to watch this video. Those who just want to see a really sick knife, and those of you who want to see a sick knife and know why the fit and finish is amazing, what is the reputation behind this line, this brand, why is it that maybe it's a knife that you should put on your dream list? Now I've tried to create a really zen environment for you, right? Typically I got the toaster behind my right shoulder, but this is a knife that I'm so excited to hold in my hand again and to show you that I wanted to create a space where it feels peaceful. I'm going to narrate a little bit later. And I mean, I even have a script. Like that's how important I think sharing this information to you about Konosuke and the Fujiyama line is. I wrote a script and I'll narrate it to you so that you can get the most out of this video as possible. Now to make this Zen, I brought out my Maneko Nekis for the first time. I even have my succulents. Then over my right shoulder, I have the Art of Armor book, my little samurai replica, the Fujiwara towel in lure of a toaster, because that's not exactly the most attractive thing. And so let's just dive right into it. So this Konosuke Fujiyama is a 210 millimeter Gyoto blue steel number one. It comes with this gorgeous Magnolia Saya. Of course, you always gotta love the little tassel pin. Now let's just open the box and see what's inside. Yesterday when I opened it, I have shivers. I had shivers. And today, opening it, I have shivers again. This is truly a beautiful piece. I can't wait to show you. So let's start with the handle because that's kind of how a knife comes out of the box, right? The blade always has this cardboard sheet on it. And so first impressions do start with the handle. So what you see here is a beautiful ebony handle with a blonde buffalo horn bolster. But what I love about it that ferrule, ferrule or bolster, is it just has a lot of character and depth, right? It's not just one color, it's not just blonde, it's blonde and brown. And beneath this cardboard sheet, is the knife, the knife that Lubo wanted. This is what he was after. Sure, it has a nice handle, but he was after this beautifully clad 210 millimeter Gyoto blue steel number one. Take a look at that cladding. I love the suminagashi. I love this little stamp here. We believe the kanji beneath it implies that um, the steel of the knife is blue number one. Here's the other side. Now, right here, what you're noticing, that gap, that's actually called machi. Not machi gap. Machi in Japanese means gap. So this is a way of uh, placing the tang into the handle, a way of old in Tokyo. So this gap, that's not a default. That is done purposely to really ensure the balance point is perfection. There's a few other things like not having the tang be all the way set into the handle would stop the handle from potentially bursting open if it were set too deep. And so there's a few reasons, but this is called matchy for all of you. And um, what I thought we could do actually on the spot is let's weigh the knife. And so I can tell you how much it weighs. And then I'll take the caliper and we'll see its thickness 
of the spine at the heel, the height at heel, and we'll take a look at the shoulder shots. So this knife, on my little espresso scale, comes in at 165.3 grams. Let's measure that spine at the heel. It's very thin, I can tell you without even looking at the caliper. We are looking at just above two millimeters, barely. If I had to give it a numerical value, I'd say 2.1. In terms of height, again, this isn't my knife. I'm going to make sure I'm not even touching the blade if possible. Let's just get an estimate. Let me just overshoot it on this side. I'm comfortable with that. It's probably about a millimeter larger. It's 50, I'd say 50 millimeters, right? High that heel. Now the spine is absolutely stunning. Look at that contour, and we'll talk about that a bit later. But what's cool about it too is for a spine that doesn't taper too thinly, almost more of a workhorse geometry, which isn't the case, take a look at that choil. So what we're going to do now is I want to teach you a bit about Konosuke about the Fujiyama line. And I think the best way to do that, to make sure that I don't mess up with some great information on that sheet is I'm going to place the knife here. I'm gonna find some really nice music and I'm going to narrate and show you clips of this knife so you can continue to see the knife in action and you can learn about Konosuke and Fujiyama. Now, before we can properly understand Konosuke, the brand and Fujiyama line, we actually need to talk a little bit about Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji in Japan is a highly sacred and popular landmark. It holds a special place in the lives of Japanese people, and even the use of the word Mount Fuji or Fujiyama, whether it be the words themselves or the depiction of the mountain, is uncommon, and when used is a symbol of a certain level of high craftsmanship and quality. It essentially is used as a way of saying, this is of the highest quality, top of the top. And so, how that relates to Konosuke is the following. Now, Konosuke is a knife brand developed in 2007 by Kosuke Kawamura. Kawamura-san wanted to create a knife that was new and exciting and unlike anything ever seen on the market. Despite his numerous rejections for this idea by blacksmiths in the Sakai region when he approached them, he eventually stumbled onto Hiromi Morimoto, a sharpener best known as Morihiro who was game to help oversee the president of Konosuke's vision. Together, they founded a new line, the Fujiyama line, which came to be more than 10 years ago. Its intent, to have the highest possible quality kitchen knife under that line by delivering exceptional craftsmanship from fit and finish to steel, sharpening, etc., and to deliver it at a reasonable price, never before seen. The blacksmith for this line was, and still is, Yoshikazu Tanaka an extremely well-known blacksmith in Japan, especially in the Sakai region, where he focuses on double bevel knives. Now, Tanaka-san is best known for his mastery of heat treatments for all Hitachi steels and for his amazing forging skills developed over many decades. Together, both he, Tanaka-san, and Morihiro-san crafted exceptional, never-before-seen knives and gave Konosuke and Fujiyama the worldwide acclaim recognized today by most Japanese knife kitchen enthusiasts. Morihiro-san is now partially retired at the time of this video, so September 2021. He does own his own little atelier or his own little homono, but he doesn't do any of the sharpening himself. The new sharpener, Myojin Naohito, has taken over sharpening knives for the Fujiyama line, which has been renamed to FM Fujiyama so that it allows users to recognize the difference in which of the sharpeners handle their Konosuke knife. From 2007 to 2018, the blacksmith remains Yoshikazu Tanaka, but the sharpener is Morihiro. Anything past 2018 would be a knife sharpened by Myojin and still forged by Tanaka-san. Now, Fujiyama line utilizes a series of steel types, from white number one to white number two, blue number one, blue number two, and blue super, and has multiple different knife finishes. Typically, the Fujiyama knives are 240 millimeter Gyotos, which is why it's really impressive that Lubo was able to find a 210 millimeter Gyoto. Now, a few words about Tanaka-san. Tanaka-san uses pre-laminated sheets from Hitachi. He has no preference for steels. His aim, 
is to work and master all of them. He only uses well-forged steels for single bevels. Now, Tanaka used to weld forge in-house, but after a few years switched to pre-laminated steels, and according to him, there is no noticeable difference in quality and end product. Now, pre-laminated steels, a lot of people would assume that those are steels that are of low quality, but that's just simply not the case. It depends on the quality of the steels used and then the quality of the process. And in fact, pre-laminated steels are very common practice and very few Japanese blacksmiths still well forge. Some of the two that I know that still well forge would be Fujiwara-san and Moritaka-san, but otherwise, even blacksmiths like Yu Kurosaki, for example, world-acclaimed blacksmiths use pre-laminated steels, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So there you have it, some history on Konesuke and the Fujiyama line. To own a Konesuke, especially the Fujiyama line, it's no joke, it's not just a knife. It's a piece of history, it's a piece of exceptional craftsmanship, and thanks to Lubo and Omega on Kitchen Knife Forms, it's definitely a piece that I myself want to own one day. If you want to read more of the information that I got from the blog post that Omega put together on Kitchen Knife Forms, I'll also put a link in the description below. It's been a pleasure to be able to hold this knife. No, I will not be making any knife demos. This isn't my knife to use but it's been a pleasure to be able to hold it, to talk about Konesuke and to talk about Fujiyama. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope this video is going to be present on YouTube for years to come so that everyone who wants to understand the hype of Fujiyama, of Konesuke, has a place to go and hopefully get reliable information. Thank you so much. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of it. And until next time, peace.